Hi, uh, Miyasan, Konnichiwa. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen.、Um, thank you very much for joining this session.、Uh, my, my name is Yuki Kishi.、Uh, I'm、uh, working at a company called Plug and Play Japan as FinTech Director. Uh, today, uh, this session is a guide to the Tokyo startup ecosystem, and we have、uh, three amazing panelists、uh, alongside with me. So, let me quickly introduce、uh, one by one. So, starting off, we have Na Watanabe san.、Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello,、uh, this is Watanabe、uh, from KPMG Japan. So, I'm now leading the open innovation team in、uh, KPMG. And so,、uh, I am now organizing the、uh, Tokyo Startup Program, Asia Meets Tokyo,、uh, which is uh, inviting uh, Asian startups、uh, to Tokyo. So,、uh, I think so, a lot of uh, startups uh, got my、e、LinkedIn email、uh, by yesterday. So, please reply. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Watanabe san. And next, we have Shibata san from Finolab. Shibata san, please. Hello, this is、uh, Makoto Shibata from Finolab.、Uh, I'm managing the community of Finolab, which is consisting of uh, uh, 50 startups and also 16、um, corporate members. And we try to、uh, support these、uh, startups to grow. And at the same time, we try to connect these.、Uh, Uh, corporate members with the、uh, startups to pursue their open innovation initiatives. So, I guess、uh, we can talk a lot about、uh, fintech community here in Tokyo. Thank you very much, Shibata san. And last but not least, we have、uh, Paul Chapman from、uh, MoneyTree.、Uh, thanks, Kishi san. Hi, I'm Paul Chapman,、uh, founder and CEO of MoneyTree. We're a Japanese fintech startup based in Uh, in Tokyo.、Uh, we are a member of Finolab.、Uh, we work with KPMG as our auditor.、Uh, we also work with the major banks in providing them access to customer data with the customer's consent.、Uh, we're the largest such platform in Japan.、Uh, we have over 60 enterprise clients. We support 2,700 discrete data sources.、Uh, I can safely say we are one of the generation one fintech companies in Japan as a Co founder、uh, of the、uh, our company is one of the founders of the FinTech Association of Japan. And、uh, yeah, we've been、uh, really glad to be a part of the community as things have gone from kind of zero to one in the last five years. Thank you, Paul.、Um, so basically, this session、um, is meant, to, meant for,、uh, for those、uh, audiences watching from abroad. I'd like to sort of give you、uh, like、what, what, what's attractive,、uh, what's attractiveness.、Um, Uh, in, in、uh, fintech ecosystem, especially in Tokyo. So, let me kick off、uh, with a question to Watanabe san.、Um, so, I, you've mentioned that you are now helping uh, this uh, Tokyo Fintech Accelerator program in Japan.、Um, so, from a perspective, why Tokyo and what, what's great about、uh, this fintech? Yeah. So, of course,、so、Tokyo is the world's、uh, safest city. Uh, so, uh, so, the、uh, Gigantic,、uh, has a gigantic GDP, and、uh, so a lot of so leading companies、uh, in Tokyo.、Uh, so, the, that、uh, leading companies like to be collaborate with、uh, so Asian startups and global startups. So,、uh, so of course,、uh, we are now uh, focusing uh, in uh, Asia meets Tokyo, so we are focusing on、uh, Asian startups.、Uh, so, uh, The Tokyo government is、uh, preparing the, a lot of uh, supporting uh, programs、uh, in order to uh, invite uh, Asian startups.、Uh, I think、uh, Asian and global startups. So I think this is a, a very beneficial uh, for uh, startups、uh, who like to expand their business、uh, in Japan. So、uh, this is a、uh, recent why、uh, in Tokyo. I mean, the more, more like follow up question on that.、Um, you said the fintech, the word fintech、mm. is pretty broad, and mm, um, mm. Uh, there's many like, you know, people like doing a settlement, yeah. payment, yeah. lending.、Um, do you have any sort of targeted fintech players like targeted to, fintech players,、um, yeah. for this program? Or、mm. Okay.、Yes. Yeah.、Uh, so we have three categories、mm. uh, uh, focusing on.、Uh, first is、uh, sustainable fintech. Uh, which deals, in, deals with,、uh, uh, for example, ESG or 
uh, impact investing mm. or uh, any is a sustainable one. And second one is the data analysis, which includes the wealth tech and so insure tech. Uh, so the so you leveraging the data and so in so the build up uh, the engagement of customers or uh, demand perspective mm. or so. May, uh, I, I think so. Uh, existing uh, players uh, would like to uh, collaborate with mm. uh, such kind of players. Uh, so, third one is uh, so regulatory aspect. Mm. So, uh, the, there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, needs uh, from existing financial institutions. Uh, they would like to automate uh, the regulation. Uh, uh, so, regulation regulators, for example, regulators. Uh, uh, so reporting to regulators, mm. uh, for example. So uh, reporting regulators and inspection. Uh, so they uh, are now doing some parts of that. So the manual work. So but they like to automate it. And so uh, so there are many. So 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 in other cases. So uh, the government uh, like to impose more sanctions if uh, they fail to uh, line with uh, so legislation. Mm. So, uh, so the financial institutions have to comply with uh, the such kind of legislations more and more in the future. So the, these three categories is uh, so our focusing mm. area uh, to Im invitation. Thank you. I mean, uh, ESG, data analytics, rec tech, all very important, and, and also what's needed in the Japanese, uh, especially, um, ecosystem. Mm. Now, moving on to uh, Shibata-san, um, you are uh, working at Phenolab at the mm -hmm. moment, more like from community um, per uh, creation perspective. Um, so, um, I know you are, so from a perspective, like what, what's good about Tokyo? Like, um, let's say you've seen some other other location could be compared to London, or you, uh, Singapore. Like, what's the uniqueness of uh, Tokyo ecosystem? Right. Maybe I can um, start with some figures. Mm. We have like more than five hundred uh, startups now. When Paul Sun started his uh, <laughs> business, we could uh, rarely count the fintech startups, <laughs> but now we have more than five hundred, and it's quite difficult to keep track of. And also. There are more than 100 um, head offices of uh, financial institution in uh, Tokyo. Mm. And also, there are like more than 50 uh, innovation labs in Tokyo. And I think these uh, figures show that the fintech environment in Tokyo is something significant. And it's, and it's not only these figures, but also the community aspect of uh, Tokyo is something to uh, notice. And now we are seeing different communities growing. So my Finolab is uh, one of the, the main uh, fintech communities, but also um, uh, Kishan's Plug and Play have a significant uh, role to play. And also there are some other uh, virtual uh, communities mm. coming out. There's one called fintech, uh, Tokyo Fintech Meetup, and also there's insurance uh, Meetup and all these uh, virtual communities are uh, growing, and also um, many financial institutions are trying to uh, establish their innovation lab, and along with that, they are creating certain uh, communities around their uh, innovation initiatives, like uh, Spark with the MEFG mm. or Blue Lab with Mizuho and. Um, Hoops Link mm. with SMBC, all these uh, mega banks are trying to create their unique uh, fintech hub along with some community around that. And these are communicating, communicating quite a bit, and we can see that all these uh, locations are um, within five kilometers mm. uh, distance, and I think you can easily access different communities. And also uh, our regulators, uh, Financial Service Agency, FSA, and also Bank of Japan, they are very um, keen to 
communicate with these uh, communities. So we now have a, a fintech dedicated team at FSA and also mm. fintech center at Bank of Japan. And they are trying to uh, accommodate the requests from the different communities. And I think it's becoming quite healthy ecosystem around this. And I think we can talk a lot about this um, later. Mm. Thank you very much. And uh, to Paul, like from a startup perspective, uh, perspective, why Tokyo? Oh, Kishisan, up until as recently as five or six years ago, the, the market here was still really characterized by a lot of closed doors. Mm. Or doors you didn't know where to find them. <laughs> they were hidden. Like you had to say the right thing to the right mm -hmm. person, mm. and they would show you the door. However, that has changed remarkably in such a short period of time. Mm. So when we were a seed company, a Series A company, it was, I would say, a miracle that we got as far as we did. Mm. Uh, we were lucky. We were ignorant. So we didn't <laughs> know we shouldn't try this, and we did. Mm. But in that time, very many things have changed. So mm. access to investors has changed considerably. Mm. Um, you no longer have to have gone to school with someone mm. to get investment <laughs> from them. Mm. You can just go to an accelerator, or you can meet them at a, at a, fin, at a, fintech, uh, at a fintech networking event. Mm. The doors are much more open. Mm. So too in finding clients. If you want to work with other fintechs, uh, that's easy. But if you want to work with the biggest banks or the biggest insurance companies, mm. and insurance is a hard one. It's, very, it's an industry that's really <laughs> bound up by a lot of regulation. Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of room to move. But yet they're looking for all these things to do. I, I know that you know, there's some big insurers that, that work with plug and play. Yep. So these are companies that now, once upon a time, and I would say you know, the first time I met a C-level of a major credit card company here, that was the last time I met one as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, but since then, I've met C-levels from banks, mm. uh, insurance companies. What I've found is that there's been a changing of the guard. So mm. people who once upon a time just didn't get technology, now you've got banks like MUFG, uh, mm. so Mitsubishi UFJ, uh, SMBC, where the, the top person in each of those banks is not just savvy about IT, they're investing heavily into it. Mm. Uh, they also happen to be two of our clients. <laughs> but this just goes to show that even someone like me from Australia, and we are a Japanese company, but mm. clearly I'm not from Japan. Um, if I can do it, then people from overseas can do it too. Mm. That said, there are still challenges. Yep. It's yep. not at the stage of New York or yep. Singapore mm. or, the, or London. But that's an opportunity as well because it's not overexposed. Mm. Because we've gone from closed doors to open doors, mm. well, now there are these doors which aren't really busy. That like, They're waiting for people to come and try. Mm. So that's the opportunity for startups right now. Also, I love living in Tokyo. That helps. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Nice. Yes, Shibata-san. Right. And I guess uh, I can point out, since I've been in this industry for many years, <laughs> um, now that uh, large financial institutions are forced to change their culture, I mean, mm. they need to uh, um, bring in digital elements or innovation elements. And as Paulson uh, mentioned, um, they are trying to reach out um, to different startups to um, change their uh, internal conservative culture. Mm. And it is true that uh, these uh, large banks are still not as fast as the st startups, but um, it's definitely the case that they are changing their attitudes. And also, um, the the government or the regulators are changing their attitude and recently uh, financial service agency announced that they will accommodate all the application uh, from foreign companies in English mm. and I think that is uh, revolutionary change mm, yeah. for, for <laughs> someone in, in this <laughs> industry for for many years mm. so I guess uh, it's a good uh, time for anybody who's in um, outside of Japan to uh, consider entering the Jap Japan market. Yeah. That's true. Um, but having said, I think uh, Paul San, you already touched uh, a few points. But uh, what would be the challenges? Um, I, I know that. How the long is this session? Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got another. Right, let, let me get on my list. Um, Fifty more minutes. The, but, yeah. the challenges were 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 many, but yeah. what always 
you know, what I'm always grateful for was the mm. fact that we had the opportunity to try. Mm. And actually, people like Shibata san you know, were <laughs> people that we met early on mm. uh, in our journey. And you know, our journey is, is not over by any means. But in the early days, for example, there's a great, uh, there's a great contest uh, run by ISID called the Financial Innovation Business Contest. And the year that I appeared there, we like, like, wow, they're going to let us pitch. And it was all in Japanese. And then the following year, when my co-founder, Mark Macdad, who's also one of mm. the um, board members of the FinTech Association, <laughs> well, he got to do it in English. And from that year onwards, 2016 onwards, it's been done in English. Mm. And we're doing this in English. And so this is Japan. And in Japan, you know, people speak Japanese. Just like if you come from, I don't know, uh, Australia, you have to learn proper English if you go to the UK. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've got to learn the, the, the language of the, the local community. But that said, it's no longer this weird thing where you always have to justify why, you, why you're there. We're, mm. kind of, we're accepted. It's like, okay, you're a foreign member of the fintech community and you're working in this Japanese company. Mm. You have to be the CEO if it's me. Um, but that was a weird thing. And mm. I'll give you an example. We've done a major development project with one of our partners. You know, we're a data platform, but we help large financial institutions make new things on that platform. Mm. And so we, we have a team uh, of foreign and Japanese uh, developers, yep. uh, the majority of whom are actually in Sydney, mm. so working remotely with one of the biggest banks in Japan. I can actually say who it is because the app has been released. It's Mitsubishi UFJ. Mm. They've launched a new app called Mabel. Money Able is the I idea. Forget. Mabel. <laughs> and uh, I mean, for the biggest bank in Japan to work with a startup in Japan is one thing, but then mm. to work with an international team using agile development methodology. I mean, mm. Japan has changed. However, not everyone in the bank has changed. Yep. <laughs> that team, the digital department, mm. the head of the bank, those guys have changed. Mm. So there's still challenges, mm. but um, no longer are we seen as, I suppose, as like, well, why are you here? You know, oh, you speak Japanese, thank goodness. Like, <laughs> it, you don't have to, as long as enough people speak Japanese uh, in, the, in, the, in the meeting, that works. The other challenges that we had were fundraising was a big one. Okay. Um, a lot mm. of people would assume that we just didn't know what we were doing. And to some extent, they were right, because we knew a lot about apps, we knew a lot about cloud, a lot about data. We didn't know much about, to be honest with you, about banking in Japan or mm. finance in Japan. But we were able to learn that. And so these are things that you can learn, even though it's different to Australia, different to the US, different to Singapore. Well, it's not impossible for someone else to learn it, mm. even if you don't speak Japanese. We have people at MoneyTree who speak no Japanese, mm. and they know more about <laughs> the Japanese banking system than the average Japanese person by a big margin. Mm. So. I think these things that are seen for foreigners coming to Japan is like, oh, I couldn't do that. Well, you, c you could. Mm. And on the other side, Japan is ready for a great many people to come over as either employees at startups here uh, or as co-founders of startups here. So I think there's a big opportunity. And I know that once upon a time, foreign investors would not invest in Japan, mm. like not in Japanese startups. Actually, I'll tell you a secret. In the early days, Japanese investors wouldn't invest in Japanese startups. They all wanted to invest in Indonesia. But that has changed as well. Oh, time machine effect. No. Thank you, Sonsan. -san. Um, that has all changed. And so I think timing is the thing that we mm. need to take into account. Also, with COVID-19 this year, it's been yep. a huge setback for everyone. But Japan has, I'd say, weathered that storm better than most countries. So safety, security, very large market. And it's just not clogged full of people trying to do the same thing. Mm. Please don't come and do what Money Trees do. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. How about you from uh, uh, Shibata-san, from your perspective, what other sort of challenges, common challenges you see? Right. Um, just to uh, add to uh, Paul San's point, uh, we are, we at FinLab is uh, um, organizing uh, uh, FIBC type of event. Mm -hmm. um, uh, pitch event uh, called Finola, uh, Fino Pitch, mm. and for that uh, it's all conducted in English, and also we are um, bringing in uh, international players. And because of the COVID nineteen, we can't bring all the startups from outside of Japan. So we will ask them to uh, send a video. So mm. um, it's a new format, but I think these. Uh, uh, programs, including uh, what another son mentioned, that the Tokyo Metropolitan Government's uh, Accelerator Program, I think you would find many opportunities for foreign startups to uh, um, um, find an entry point. Mm. And I think um, an entry point is not that difficult to reach. Then I think 
uh, many uh, startups would uh, face uh, challenges for setting up a company or um, finding an office or finding a country manager. And not many uh, people are like Kolsan and <laughs> I guess uh, startups from outside Japan uh, would need to have a Japanese person to uh, help or at least a Japanese speaking person to yeah. help um, them to uh, set up their uh, operation. So I think uh, starting, finding a starting point is a very uh, big challenge. But now you can find uh, uh, support from um, Jetro or Tokyo Metropolitan Government or also like uh, Plug and Play supports uh, to some extent and also our Finolab supports to uh, some extent. So I think if you uh, ask around, you'll be able to um, uh, overcome some of these uh, major challenges in, in the beginning. What, what did I miss out? Okay. If I was to start Money Tree today in yeah. Tokyo, yeah. and I knocked on your door, what, what would Tokyo <laughs> Metropolitan Exactly, that was my next me? question. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> hey, this is all my question. question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be preparing I, for I, that. I'm interested to know, because yeah. it was yeah. very different. Yeah, so the, I think two things. Uh, the, ah, three things. Uh, the first is uh, so the launching the company, where, so where workplace. The other so Tokyo Metro Corporation Government so uh, security workplace mm -hmm. uh, the, the the program. So and the second one is uh, so to find a uh, uh, customer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to find them in order to, to find a customer, so they have the the program the the so uh, business concierge Tokyo. So they can support you to find a customer. Mm -hmm. And so the third one is uh, so this higher the employees. Mm. The, the, so hire, in order to hire the employees, so the Tokyo Metro government, so uh, of course uh, the business concierge Tokyo can, uh, can, uh, can access the companies which so like to collaborate with mm. you. Mm. Uh, so so uh, this is one thing. The second thing is uh, so there, there's a, uh, a lot of uh, collaborators, for example, uh, so business concierge Tokyo would like, uh, can uh, invite them and um, so for example the accelerators and uh, so supporters uh, so uh, they, they that kind of supporters uh, support the foreign uh, companies uh, hire the employment or so uh, before the hire but they have to so operate the business uh, the specialists can support them so I, I think it's good good that's great advice. so from day one you can get a place to work is that right? Like yeah, the work, yeah, the workplace. Right, yeah. And then uh, in terms of sort of registrate, like registrations and mm. uh, government related things like, you know, having yeah, to go to yeah. the city office, the ward office, that kind of stuff they can help with the yeah, administrative and with hiring as well. Hiring, that's yep. that's yeah. very different yeah. to what we had there. <laughs> 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 that's great. And even the Tokyo Metropolitan Government uh, gives a subsidy for oh. someone who is setting up a mm. new uh, really? financial service related company. Maybe I should start. Yeah, so <laughs> new one. On the side. New one. And maybe we can ask uh, Kish-san about his experience with at uh, Plug and Play, how um, they are helping uh, foreign startups or foreign startups to uh, come to uh, Japan market. Yes, uh, so hello everyone once again. I'm Yuki <laughs> from Plug and Play. So what we do is we are innovation platform whereby we try to bridge the gap between the startups and the corporates, and we like to do ma ma business matchmaking. And we headquarter in Silicon Valley, now we have different offices globally. Um, so that's why we are leveraging our global networks to bring startups from outside and then uh, trying to help and support the Japan entry strategy. Um, and uh, your question, yes, so what, what, ha what have I seen so far is, um, surprisingly, uh, to be honest with you, surprisingly, uh, we do receive, uh, we, we have uh, received many applications from overseas. Uh, to be honest, from um, uh, before, let's say, joining Plug and Play, I had this um, thought that um, you know, Japan may not be so attractive to uh, international startups, but in the end, in terms of the number of applications, uh, it was three digit numbers. And, and also it's increasing um, every time we, we have new batch. So, which is, I think, Shiba-san, you already mentioned that, uh, but it, 
I think one the one the reason why that um, we we do receive such uh, great number of applications is because uh, not only of course not only plug and play but also the all the stakeholders around these fintech ecosystems. So of course we have KPMG, Finolab, and also MoneyTree, as well as we have regulators supporting and and also large corporates doing more open uh, doing more open innovations. So I think all this um, ecosystem itself is attracting uh, more startups, um, especially from overseas as well. So that, that's my observations mm. at the moment. So I think we have a few more minutes left. Uh, so I'd like to ask the final question to each of you. Like, what would be your, sort of your advice for those audience uh, watching uh, this session? And uh, yes, maybe one or two comments. Yeah. Maybe starting with uh, Watanabe-san. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the Japanese uh, situation is very changing. So, uh, not only financial institutions, but also so the non-financial uh, companies like to collaborate with uh, fintechs, uh, fintech startups. Uh, so, uh, for example, so the uh, our uh, Tokyo Metropolitan Government Program. Uh, uh, so some, uh, so ten, there is uh, ten, over ten mentors. Uh, so the half is a financial institution, the half is non-financial institution. Mm. For example, so uh, electric maker, for example, so Sony and Mitsubishi, uh, Mitsubishi Electric, and so the uh, SI, SI company, for example, TIS, mm. and the other one is uh, the Bushi's uh, global brain. Mm. And so the other one is uh, so the data vendor quick. Uh, so there is a non-financial institutions. But they like to collaborate with uh, overseas startups, so in order to expand their business. Yeah. So the, I think there is a very big opportunity in Japan is now arising. So mm -hmm. in, the, in terms of fundraising and collaboration, so uh, please apply to the program. And uh, of course, uh, after the program, so they are now open to mm -hmm. startups. So. Thank you, Watanabe san uh, Shibasan, one or two advice. Yeah, now the buzzword in Japan is uh, digital transformation, yep. just like um, any place in the world. But after the COVID-19, I think uh, many people started to realize that there are many paperworks or manual processes, mm. and especially um, financial institutions now are trying to change their uh, processes in order to uh, digitalize their uh, main part of the, the financial service. So if you are uh, working with financial institution or even if you're um, offering the service to uh, general public, I think this is a good chance to uh, come to Japan and the, the government is also uh, advocating the, the digital initiatives uh, they have just announced to um, open up a digital agency soon. So if you're uh, anything to do with digital, uh, please come to Japan. Thank you. Thank you. And last but least, Paul-san. Thanks, Yuki. So we have a couple of things that have happened recently and something coming up that will make it the right time to come to Japan in the next 12 months. So open banking started this year we have basically API access to read data from every bank in Japan. Mm. Uh, that infrastructure is available. Uh, MoneyTree can provide it to you as well. But that's the starting point. Next year, uh, we believe that the, and I'll try and get this translation right, I think it's the financial services brokerage law. So this will allow non-financial institutions to sell and promote financial products. So this is a huge, uh, shall we say, uh, in, in, Japanese, in English. De deregulation. <laughs> deregulation, sometimes I forget my English. Uh, a huge deregulate point of deregulation for the market here. So what you're going to see is this sort of Cambrian explosion. I remember mm. the word Cambrian. <laughs> this huge explosion of non-financial institutions who have huge customer bases wanting to get into that space. And they need tools, they need know-how, and they need help with the digital channel. And these are all things that found, founders who are starting a business in Japan or bringing their startup from overseas to Japan can offer. And as I said before, we are not inundated, we're not saturated with competition. At the moment in the fintech space, we have a few hundred companies, but we have actually less than Australia, but we have mm. almost six times the population. So the opportunity, open banking, the, fi the financial services brokerage law at the end of next year, and the fact that Japan is more open for business than it ever has been for fintech and for startups, 
get here in the next 12 months. Thank you, Paul san. And with that, um, I'd like to close the session. So today we had uh, three amazing uh, guest, uh, panels, panelists. Uh, so one from uh, accelerator perspective, one from community perspective, one from um, startup perspective. And hopefully uh, those audience watching this, you had uh, some takeaways. And uh, I believe that if you like to get connected, please send us any LinkedIn message or anything. So I uh, hope to speak to you soon. Thank you very much.